Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Learn Dota 2. Today we're going to be doing Skeleton King, but I'm actually going to show you guys the ban and pick phase of this Captain's Mode match that I'm doing. We are uh, with Dennis, Emerson, Mijimu, and Cam in this game. It was a five stack. I'm of course post-commentating, they're not actually here right now. But uh, that's so that I can focus a little bit more on explaining to you guys what's going on. So, we're I'm showing you guys the pick ban phase of this Captain's Mode match because it's a little bit unusual. You might notice that we are just letting our time run out every time. And uh, that is because we're playing something called uh, All Random Captain's Mode, which is something that Dennis and Cam invented, where you go into Captain's Mode, you don't pick anything, you don't ban anything, you let your time run out and it randoms you a hero every time and you don't ban anything, it just skips your ban phase. So these people are picking a serious pro team of Dota, if you don't recognize the heroes. I'll, I'll just say that this would not be out of place if you saw a team play it in the international. And meanwhile we're just picking whatever the game picks for us. And uh, I will say that up to this game we had never lost a game of all random captains mode, which is pretty fucking silly. Given that we're just taking an all random team and fighting a team of whoever the fuck the enemy team wants to play. So our uh, our setup here is pretty silly. I'm in a second going to slow down the game back to one times. But our team is pretty silly. Uh, let me just go to player perspective here so we can see what I'm up to. That's not my player perspective. Here we go. So I'm playing Skeleton King. I hadn't played Skeleton King in a long time actually, but he is, the reason I'm showing this game is because he's a really good uh, carry to start with. <clears throat> this is not what I'm actually clicking on. It, it, the shop looks weird because I actually had a Skeleton King guide open that I was opening. Um, yeah, I'm trying to decide what to pick up. I actually make a dumb mistake with like the uh, the items I am purchasing here and don't have quite enough money. I was thinking I could get all that plus an iron branch, but as you can see I actually have 48 uh, left and I'd love to go to grid view here, but all this shit is in the way. Oh well, fuck it. <laughs> Whatever. I might need that sh shit to uh, like go to free camera or something like that. But anyway, why did I switch to Cam's perspective? Why did I switch to Cam's perspective? Go to Skeleton King. Oh, I was probably looking at Cam's items. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I'm actually going to wait here <laughs> until the game starts to pick up an Iron Branch, because I only need five more gold for it, and that doesn't actually take very long. So I'm going to be slightly behind our creep wave, but that's not a big deal. I would not necessarily recommend this setup. I would probably skip uh, either one of the Tangos or the Gauntlet of Strength and just buy some Iron Branches, because that would be a much more efficient build. But I did my math a little bit wrong, but that's no big deal. Uh, so I'm going to go and follow the creep wave now, trailing slightly behind. But anyway, we have a really silly team here because we only have one support. So we're going to be sending Razor mid and Queen of Pain in the off lane solo. And we knew they were doing a tri lane because that's just what their their comp is. And we thought that if we did an aggressive tri lane with Sven and Skeleton King and Keeper of the Light, we would be able to aggress on them a little bit better. But that's kind of higher level Dota play. All you need to know is that I'm laning with Sven, who's another melee carry, but he's playing support this game because we didn't have any supports. Uh, but he has a good stun, as well as Skeleton King, who we should actually talk a little bit more about. And Keeper of the Light gives us infinite mana, uh, which is why Cam just popped his stun there, and so did I. Just getting some harass out of the way here so that we can get Anti-Mage out of the lane. Anti-Mage, one of the hardest carries in the entire game, so we it's necessary to kill him early in the game and often which is what we're working on here. But anyway, let's talk about Skeleton King's kills as we just sort of hang out here and, you know, get some last hits. They're going on me a little bit, but they're not going to have any success with that. It's too early in the game, and we have too strong a tri lane to counter ganks like that. Um, but anyway, we have Hellfire Blast, which is a stun that uh, stuns for two seconds, has a 20% slow, and does damage over time and damage on contact as well. So it's a good way to get somebody dead. You can keep them in place for a little while as well as, you know, get some damage on them immediately to maybe finish them off and also get some damage over time. So maybe even if they manage to run away from the fight, they're still going to take some damage. We've also got Vampiric Aura, which we're not going to pick up just yet. But that is an area of effect lifesteal for any melee units uh, near you. 
The unfortunate thing is that this also applies to creeps, so you don't want to get it too early if you're playing Skeleton King. It's a terrible idea to level this while you're still in the lane, because if your creeps have lifesteal, they're going to push toward the enemy tower, and that's going to be dangerous for you. Um, that little gank was a miscommunication. I, Cam was, like, not talking to us during this part of the thing. He was just pinging over there, which I don't think we could actually see in the replay. And at this point, we're like, Cam, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Cam? What are you doing? Please stop doing what you're doing. Okay, but he makes it out just fine. But, uh, yeah, Cam did not communicate with his team there because he was on the phone for that part of the game. But he didn't tell us he was on the phone. He was just not talking to us, and we were very confused about what he was doing. But it all worked out okay. We're doing just fine. So we're going to stay here and pick up some last hits. I also picked up my third skill, which is Mortal Strike. This is uh, recently updated and something I was not familiar with when I, like, I had never played Skeleton King with this updated ability. In the past, it was just passive critical damage, um, which is, you know, he has 15% chance to do 125% at level 1, all the way up to 275% of his normal attack damage at level 4, which makes him, you know, very powerful uh, carry just because, you know, if he gets any damage items, then they're multiplied by this mortal strike. But also... If you use this ability actively, then you can drain 20% of their... Wait. Sorry, I did, never actually read this Mortal Strike. Yeah, okay, so it says max HP drain. I don't know why it says that. It just drains 20% of... Oh, oh, I know what it is. Of the target's maximum HP and gives it to you. Which can be really good for getting into a fight with somebody. See, I just used it there to kill that anti-mage. And we took a bunch of damage as a result. But, here's the nice thing about uh, the drain. Oh, it didn't actually proc there, but later on we'll see this. The HP you take from Mortal Strike uh, goes back to the target after 7 seconds. But, if they're dead, then obviously it doesn't. Except it still goes back away from you. You lose that HP later on. But it can't kill you. So it can also, in addition to being a really good offensive ability, just taking out 20% of their maximum HP right off the bat so you can kill them if they're below a fifth of their health, you can also use it to escape by taking HP away from whoever's attacking you and then running like hell because if they can't kill you before the uh, mortal strike goes away, then you, uh, you're good. You, you'll go down to 1 HP, but if they're not there anymore, they can't finish you off. So it's a very useful escape, and we'll see that in the future. I should also mention that if you use Mortal Strike, you can't crit anymore uh, from that ability until the HP goes back and the you know it's back off cooldown. So it's not something you want to spam all the time at all. It's something that you want to use either to save yourself from dying or to secure a kill. But you want to use it very near to the end of the kill because you're going to take away your ability to crit. But it's a really interesting ability because, you you know, it gives you HP and takes HP away from the enemy. So you can really use it to win a fight that it didn't look like you were going to be able to win. By, you know, you're fighting somebody down, your HP is going down faster than theirs. But hey, 20% of your HP just went to me and now you're dead. So it's a very nice cheeky finisher move as well as an escape. And uh, it makes Skeleton King a whole lot better. You know, before this patch, I didn't like Skeleton King that much. But after this game, I actually, I, uh, I feel like he's a much better character. You can also, ah, oh, they're going on me, but, uh, you know, oh, that lift from the Rubik is bad, but I stole HP from the Anti-Mage, which gave me a bunch of extra HP. He's gonna come and try to kill me. The HP goes away, but Cam manages to block him in, and I survive just fine, which is pretty crazy, you know, and that's, that's the sort of thing that, you know, Skeleton King is so much better, and I just went back because Dennis said he had a salve for me, so I was like, yeah, why not? I'll take uh, take some healing from our support here. And by the way, the first thing I'm going for here after my initial items is power treads, which are a really common carry item. I'm going to pick those up. Those will give me some more strength as well as more attack speed, which is always good, especially on a, uh, a melee carry. You almost always want to go power treads. Be or not melee, sorry, strength carry. Because, you know, power treads often present a sort of a dilemma. You can change them to give you any attribute, either intelligence, agility, or strength. So it's often a toss-up between do I want more damage from getting my, my primary attribute up, or do I want more health from getting strength up? 
with a strength carry, no big deal. Ah, I missed that last hit, unfortunately. But yeah, with a strength carry, it's no big deal. You just leave him on strength because that gives you more health and more damage, which is a win-win for sure. So that's our that's our first build. I actually have enough to buy it, but I'm waiting until the lane pushes slightly so that I can pick it up from the side shop instead of making the courier deliver the gloves of haste that are the final part of power treads. So treads, you almost always going to be a good first item for the Skeleton King. I should mention that I'm being a little bit fast and loose with my stuns in this lane compared to what I normally would do if I was playing Skeleton King, but the nice thing is that I'm playing with Dennis here, Keeper of the Light, who one of his abilities is just give your friends a shit ton of mana, so Cam and I have been able to use our stuns over and over again, which is why we decided this would be such a strong lane, despite the fact that Cam is a carry playing a support, but you know, the stuns are good utility. And he also has an ability that makes everybody nearby move a little bit faster, and I think attack a little bit faster as well. And here's another clutch escape. I'm about to die, steal HP from the Jakiro, run the fuck away. HP goes back, but I am down to 1 HP, and I just run like hell, and I'm totally fine. Cam uh, makes it out as well. And that is another kill that they absolutely should have gotten on me, but that Mortal Strike saved my life. It's a really important ability that I feel like a lot of new Skeleton players will... Um, not quite understand how to use, but it's, you know, I it's really valuable as a defensive ability. And, uh, oops, shouldn't be hovering over the, oh, never mind, that was me. Past me, it was hovering over the TP scroll, not present me. But buying a teleport, buying a couple teleports so I can get back. I finished up my power treads. At this point, I'm going to be working toward an armlet of more Digian. Uh, can't go into the shop. I'll have to go into free camera briefly, but we're just sitting here healing. Also, can't get to the search bar because all this shit is in my way. Oh, here it is, anyway. Uh, armlet of... more... Did you, where did I go? I'm coming down here to uh, push back from this weaver who was trying to push down our tower. Uh, armlet is a really common strength carry item because it has an active effect that gives you uh, plus 25 strength plus 10 attack speed and plus 31 damage, which is really substantial buff, but it drains 40 HP per second, so you have to be a little bit careful with it. But uh, later on we'll see how the armlet works a little bit more. I'm gonna go back to player perspective, and we're going in on the Weaver. We chain stunned him with Cam's ability in mind, but Weaver used his ultimate ability, which makes him go back in time to whatever HP he had then. So we popped his ulti, but we did not manage to kill him. I again use a clutch mortal strike to get out of there just in time. Wouldn't have quite died from that one, but uh, it would have been way closer. So, not quite dead yet, but having some close encounters. They have a very strong team compared to our team, especially early game. So we're struggling a little bit. But we know that if we can just get, you know, Skeleton King, Queen of Pain, Razor farmed up, then we can have a really good chance of beating them in the late game. Except for that Anti-Mage, who we, uh, we've been killing repeatedly, so we're still in an okay position there. But, it's, uh, it was a weird situation for sure. We were fighting a pro team with basically, like, a noob pub team. Like, everybody wants to play carry, nobody wants to play support, one dude picks up Keeper of the Light and that's all we got. But, uh, you know, we're, we're doing very well given that situation. I just sold my Iron Branch to pick up a uh, Blade of Attack, which is a part of the armlet. Um, and it gives me a little bit more damage as well, so it's worth more than the Iron Branch at this point. Iron Branch is really good starting items because they give you really cheap attribute bonuses, but they get way worse as the game goes on. Because they, uh, you know, they take a whole inventory space for plus one to all stats, which is not very good. We're going in on something here. I was confused about something, apparently. I just walked away from the last hits, but I'll pick that one up. I think I thought there was a fight going on up there, but uh, they got it. A little bit weird watching myself react to voice communication when I don't remember what the voice communication was. Uh, but anyway, I'm just picking up more items here. Skeleton King is one of those heroes where if you get a lot of items on him, then he becomes almost unstoppable. And I should, by the way, talk about his ultimate, which we're going to pick up pretty soon. His ultimate is really good, and it makes him really good for beginner players, because it's not activated, you don't have to do anything to use it. All it does is, if you die and you have enough mana, which is 140, then you come back to life. That's the whole thing. Uh, it's like a free Ages of the Immortal from fighting Roshan. 
Again, as long as you have the mana. If you die with under 140 mana, you will not be resurrected, which is frustrating, especially against an anti-mage who steals your mana whenever he hits you. Um, but still, it's a very, very nice passive ultimate that makes Skeleton King very strong. It's a, actually a, an incredibly strong ultimate because whenever it's up, if you use it properly, then any fight is 6 versus 5, or any team fight, I should say, where everybody's there. And that gives your team a huge advantage, especially Skeleton King is one of those heroes who can just run in and uh, he can just die. He'll just run in, do a bunch of damage, and get focused down by the enemy, and then he'll come back to life. And meanwhile, you know, you've already done substantial damage, maybe you even killed somebody, you know, traded your life for theirs, and then you're back and you're fighting again. So, really good, you know, that's, that's a big reason why Skeleton King is such a good beginner carry. Is because you don't have to worry about a lot of active abilities. His Mortal Strike is a new one, but you know that's just an upgrade from what he used to be. Because you know it's a it's a situational thing. If you're not comfortable using it, you don't have to. It gives you crits if you don't use it, and it gives you that little bit of extra HP and uh, a burst damage on another target if you do use it. So it's just win-win. And uh, he has life steal as well. Like passive life steal is really nice if you're not very good at dealing with uh, HP management and so forth. I'm actually about to pick up uh, life steal on the next level. I'm pretty sure, and that makes Skeleton King a really effective jungler because he can just go and get all of his HP back from, you know, hitting the jungle creeps and just hang out in there and get free stuff. Some people play Skeleton King as a jungler, but he's very bad at it at level 1, so you want to wait a little bit. But at this point in the game, right after I level up my lifesteal, I can just go into the jungle and farm while my team distracts them, if that's what's necessary. You know, I, I can also totally fight at this point, especially with my built-in ages, so it's kinda is... he can adapt to whatever situation is necessary. Here's Emerson and I pushing down this lane, he's stealing all the last hits from me like a scumbag. But I'll pick up a Glove of Haste, which is the final piece of the armlet, except for it also has a recipe, which I'll need to save up for. And now I'm just gonna run into the jungle and kill a few of these guys. They're not gonna do too much damage to me, even though I don't have my life steal yet. And uh, we'll just hang out and do that, basically. My team is doing a fantastic job of keeping the lanes pushed in, making sure the anti-mage doesn't feel safe going into his jungle, making sure that they have to constantly respond to defending towers and not to, uh, you know, coming and ganking me in the jungle, not to grouping up and team fighting at a tower and forcing us to react to them. And that's a big part of, you know, how Dota games play out is like, who has the map control? Who Who's on the back foot? Who's having to defend their stuff? We're putting pressure on their mid tower right now. And uh, they'll, they'll have to respond to that. That means the anti-mage can't really be farming. We'll just kill that Jakiro, no problem. He made a big mistake standing there. I used my stun as well as Mortal Strike to take him out. And I believe the armlet recipe is like 600, so I should have that very soon. I'm just going to go into their jungle and farm it a little bit at 15 minutes, which is a pretty substantial lead at this point. We're keeping such a substantial map control. Their anti-mage isn't an early game hero at all, so he hasn't been able to, you know, help out very much. We got our lifesteal up, so we're stealing, what, excuse me, 15% of whatever damage we do, which is very substantial to jungle creeps. So I can basically keep myself at full HP forever jungling if I so choose. I'm going to go in, try to do something about this tower, and never mind, there's a lot of heroes there. We're thinking about initiating, we're thinking about it. We've got a Rubik up here. I'm like, hey guys, hey guys, I found Rubik. I'm going to stun him. And uh, there's a Bat Rider. He's going to grab me. <clears throat> and I'm going to run the fuck away. <laughs> the bad initiation. I knew they were all there. I shouldn't have been doing that. But, you know, on the upside, I do have my, my ulti up. But I'm yelling at Dennis. Hey, I need mana. Please give it to me right now. Please. And don't trade yourself for me because I am going to come back from my, uh, from my ultimate. And there it is, I'm back up, and we're going to continue running, and in a second we're going to decide to turn around, maybe, nah, Dennis doesn't have any mana so he can't do anything too much, but uh, we're going to get out of that engagement just fine. And that's the nice thing about Skeleton King, he's so hard to kill, he's so hard to kill, and, which means that you can do a lot of crazy stuff like that and end up totally fine, you know, not behind at all. I did pop a 240 second ultimate. <laughs> out of that mistake. So it's not like I came out of it without a cost, but you know, it's way better than just dying. 
and it's not good to leave your ultimate just sitting there on cooldown either. It's there. It's a common mistake being way too defensive as a skeleton king. You want to use your ultimate just like any other hero. You just you want to use your death for you know times when it's going to be useful to your team. You want to trade yourself for a hero and then come back to life. That's how Skeleton King is played. He's very aggressive, very strong. We're going to pick up our armlet. It's on the courier on its way to me right now, if I remember correctly. And then I'll show you guys how that works a little bit. The armlet's a really interesting item. There's a, an ability called armlet toggling, where if you're on very low health and you activate your armlet, it gives you that 25 strength. With that 25 strength comes uh, like a couple hundred health, which you can live on for a little while. And it will drain because of the armless effect, but you can just turn it off and turn it back on and get that health back. So it's a it's a really interesting way to stay alive when you have no health. And uh, that's something that takes some practice. But, you know, beyond that, it's also just an item that gives you a bunch of extra power. I'm just going to sit here in jungle while we wait for an engagement because, you know, as a carry, you want to find every little opportunity you can to just get yourself some more money. Uh, you know, that's how you win the game as a carry. And that's why you should really start as a support, because if you don't have that ability to look at opportunities like, okay, I need to get some money right now, I can't just be wandering around, then you're not going to do well as a support at all. He's going to blink out of there just barely. I was in the middle of stunning him when he blinked, unfortunately, and he would have totally been dead. Um, we're going to run from this engagement because there is a whole lot of fire on the ground. Emerson's getting hurt, but Mechanism from, the, uh, from Dennis is a really big deal. We've got Weaver coming in. I should mention that Weaver, when he does that little running around thing, we can't see where he is. Uh, he becomes completely invisible during that. So we can see it in the replay, but for the enemy team, he's pretty much invisible. He used his uh, time, uh, time lapse to go back in time just before he died and managed to get out of there just barely. Dodge around that ice path, which is a stun, and Cam and I are going to just beat the shit out of that dude. And I'm taking tower shots which is a huge mistake. I kept on A-clicking on my creeps and it just wouldn't get off of me. So now I'm running back. I could armlet toggle, and I think I actually do decide, yeah, why not? <laughs> I'll just armlet toggle until the mechanism back up, is back up. But see, I activate my, uh, my armlet and I get a bunch more HP, and then I get really low, and I try to armlet toggle just as I get hit by the Rubik, and go down actually for the first time this game, I think. So, you know, not a, not a big deal. We did put a lot of pressure on that top tower. And meanwhile, we've got Queen of Pain down here just split pushing away. There's nobody down there because they all had to react to us. And this is how you win a lot of games. You know, you, you might lose a team fight, but, you know, if you lose a team fight and somebody pushes down a tower during that, then you can easily say that you've won that battle. Taking a tower is, what, a thousand... Yeah, over a thousand gold for your team. And... Uh, plus, you know, it's more map control, less places for them to teleport to, and you're closer to their base. So, you know, I've won a lot of games losing team fights and taking towers. I'm just going to go back into the jungle and farm at this point. Because that is Skeleton King's job, really. Just go and get a bunch of money, and if you get enough items, you pretty much automatically win. It's just, it's so strong having that built-in huge life steal that gives you a lot more survivability in team fights. Having that, um, <clears throat> having that, those crits, if you get a lot of damage built with that, that's a lot of, uh, well, a lot of damage, <laughs> basically a lot of extra damage that other people would not get from those damage items, and it's just, it gets out of control if you build enough damage. We've got our armlet, we're working toward a skull basher right now, which is more damage, and also a little stun sometimes. There's a 25% chance to stun for one second, I believe. Uh, every time you hit somebody, which is really good for chasing people down and getting them out of fights and interrupting abilities and just general, general stuff. I'm going to hit these creeps a little bit because you can't lifesteal from buildings, including towers, but we can lifesteal from those creeps, get a little bit of health back. And I thought about pushing in more, but it was a bad idea. I'd back off, and we're going to take Roshan, I believe. Uh, Roshan, if you're not familiar, he's this big guy in this pit right here, and if you kill him, you get an item that brings you back to life, similar to my ultimate. And, you know, similar to my ultimate, again, that turns any team fight into 6 on 5, which is a really big deal. I'm just going to turn on my armlet and start hitting him. Dennis is going to pop the mechanism for more health and more armor for us, and we're going to take down Roshan, no problem. I was thinking about picking up the Aegis, but I was like, eh, no. Um, 
Emerson can actually take it. I would have put it on maybe Queen of Pain, but Queen of Pain has a lot of escape, so maybe it's good that Emerson got it. I thought about picking up myself, uh, picking it up myself as well. I could live, you know, twice in a row. I could just die, come back to life, die, come back to life again. But that's not really as useful, I don't think, as having two heroes come back at once. So it's good to split up the ages. But there's certain, certainly situations. Ah, oh, so close. I again was in the middle of trying to stun him. And does he die? I think he might die from the poison. Yeah, he does. He died from Queen of Pain's poison. Anti Mage is down. And at this point, we're just steamrolling out of control. We have a, a huge tower advantage. They only have one tower down. We have five down. <coughs> and the game is going fantastically. Again, despite our random picks, which is really silly. But again, just this is what you do with Skeleton King. You know, you don't want to spend a bunch of time downtime just doing nothing. Go into one of the jungles, kill some creep camps, kill some waves of creeps. Always be killing things if you're playing a carry. That's the most important thing to remember. We've got, he's invisible right now, but also stunned. We're trying to head him off, but he actually managed to juke us out there and go the other way. And I think my team actually might be about to find him there. Ah, nope. I think he teleported out. But that's okay. Back to farming, back to killing things, getting more money. Gonna have my Skull Basher up very soon. I think I need about, like, tw 250 more gold for that. Just walk into a wave of creeps and kill it, because I don't care. Emerson's gonna come and steal all the fucking last hits, because he's an asshole. Yep, there he goes. But Emerson is a carry as well, though not nearly as hard a carry as Skeleton King. So, really the farm should be going to me, but it's no big deal. We're stomping this game, we're just competing to have the most impressive items at the end. And I've actually been doing a, fa a fairly poor job of securing kills in this game, so my, my farm is not the greatest. I think I only have like two or three kills at this point, which is not that many compared to the 16 our team has. Other people have been picking them up. Skeleton King, it could be hard to actually get the kill with him. He doesn't have good finishing moves besides his mortal strike. But, uh, yeah, we'll stun that guy, come in here, stand in the fire, because we're all idiots, apparently. Or, oh, I got stunned in the fire. Uh, we, I'm gonna try to armlet toggle. I did it! Oh, man. So close. Yeah, you can see my, my health got super low, and I just turned off my armlet, turned it back on, got all my health back. Not all of my health back. Like... What is it? It's like, it's uh, almost 500 health, so it's substantial. Uh, what you get for turning on the armlet. And we're just gonna take down this tower. I'm gonna continue armlet toggling. Probably shouldn't be here anymore, probably should just back up. But I am a big help in taking this tower down. I'm super low, I'm gonna armlet toggle again. Come back in, cause I'm crazy like that. I do have my ultimate up. And there it is, ultimate pops, no big deal. This is what I'm supposed to do to a certain extent. Come in, we're gonna kill everybody. Totally team wipe them, because that's how far ahead we are. And now we're gonna take a barracks, maybe even two barracks, I can't quite remember. I'm gonna pick up my Skull Basher from their shop, because that is something you can do. You can access your, shop, your stash from either shop, not just your own. And uh, that's gonna be really helpful for me. Skull Basher, really powerful item for a carry. Let's look at exactly what it does. It's plus 40 damage, which is, you know, substantial. Not huge, but substantial. Plus six strength is really good because I'm a I'm a strength carry, so that gives me more damage as well as more health. And uh, I'm melee, so I have a 25% chance to stun for 1.4 seconds every time I hit somebody. It also has a cooldown of two seconds, so you can you only trigger one bash every two seconds, in addition to the 25% chance. I'm gonna come over here and say, hey guys, we should probably take this barracks as well. So we're gonna start killing the creeps over here, getting our creep wave up to that tower, and then we'll just push down the uh, the second racks and pretty much all games are over when you have two racks down especially if you still have all of your tier 2 towers which we do there's almost no way for the enemy to come back from that because when you get barracks down that makes all of your all of your creeps if you've taken their barracks down all of your creeps become substantially more powerful which means that they'll win against the enemy creep waves and the team will have to, the enemy team will have to all the time be defending against those waves. They'll push into the barracks by themselves and uh, try to take the tower. I took a bunch of damage there and I think I make a huge mistake here. Let's armlet toggle while I have a damage over time effect on me. How about that? Uh, you have to remember that when you armlet toggle you do go down to 1 HP for a, a split second. If you're getting uh, damage over time effects hitting on you, which I was from the uh, Batrider fire, I think, then that's a terrible idea because you're going to die. 
in that in that split second when you have one HP. So that was a big mistake on my part. Poor armlet toggle, but doesn't really matter. I believe we took down the tower there. Let me go to free camera for a second. Oh no, we took down the whole rack. So, you know, trading a few of our lives for an entire set of barracks is easily, easily, easily worth it every single time. If you can sacrifice yourself to take down a set of barracks. Every time, man. It's it's really good. We've got now two sets of barracks down. They could still maybe kind of come back for the, from this if Anti-Mage farmed super hard. What does he have? He has his Battle Fury up at 27 minutes, and that's it. He doesn't even have uh, you know Power Treads yet. That's a pretty bad situation for that Anti-Mage to be in. He's one of those heroes where if he hadn't gotten killed so hard in the early game, he could have easily come back and killed us even after we had a set of racks down, but he's so far behind at this point that it's extremely unlikely I'm going to go back to Skeleton King. I'm just hanging out here. I'm like, hey, I, I'm just going to wait here until we're ready to fight the the people. But in the meantime, I'm just going to hang out. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that I'm so hard to kill. To just hang out close to their base and make sure that every single one of their lanes is pushed up into their base, which means they can't leave, which means Anti-Mage can't farm. They can't go into their jungle. They just can't really do anything, and uh, you know that's how you that's how you press an advantage. You just war of attrition, siege their base, make sure they can't get out, and eventually you'll be able to go in, or the creeps will just go in and start destroying things for you. And uh, we're going for the last set of barracks right now. If we take down this third set of barracks, the game is over like 99.999% of the time. All of your creeps get even more powerful than normal mega creeps. Uh, from one lane of barracks down if you manage to do that. I was running in there being a little cheeky because I had my ultimate up. I forgot that any mage takes away your mana every time he hits you, so I actually didn't end up with enough mana to come back to life, which is unfortunate, but that's okay. Meanwhile, you know, while I posed that distraction, my team took out two of them and a third tier barracks tower which is going to make it even harder for them to defend because now that barracks won't fight off creeps by itself and if we just get a wave of creeps pushing they have to take care of that as well as the two sets of mega creeps which by the way are pushing into their tier 4 towers in front of their ancient right now so it's uh, it's looking pretty dire for the dire if I may make a silly joke I'm dead again let's go free camera and see what exactly they're doing here anime is just like okay just give me the tiny bits of money I can get from killing these mega creeps please 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 <laughs> worth noting that mega creeps despite being stronger actually give less gold than normal creeps so it's a it's a double whammy for the enemy team not only do they have to defend against the waves of, waves of creeps all the time but they get less money for doing it and less experience as well I believe so they're just doing what they can, keeping our creeps out of their base. Already taken like half of a tower, or eh, is way closer to a third of a tower, just from the creeps pushing in while they were killing us all at their bottom racks. And uh, like I said, the creeps are just going to constantly push in. You can't just kill a wave of them and uh, expect the wa wave to push back like you can when your creeps are even. Meanwhile, I'm hanging out in their jungle, just farming, waiting for other people to come up and be ready to go. Uh, I'm picking up a glove of hate. Oh no, sorry, that's uh, that's anti mage. I was like, what am I buying? Uh, picking up a Sanj. Sanj being uh, a good item that builds into a Heaven's Halberd. Sanj gives you uh, well, we can look at it right here actually. Gives you plus ten damage, plus sixteen strength, which is again really good for a strength carry, and uh, also a chance to maim. Uh, which is a slow, 20% uh, 20 20 movement slow, and you have 15% chance of proccing that. So between that and my basher, it's going to be really difficult for people to run away from me. But the main reason I'm buying that is to build into a Heaven's Halberd. I can't go into the shop right now. Let's, uh, yeah, let's go to free camera. I don't think we'll miss anything. Let's look, look at the Heaven's Halberd. It's basically the same thing, except a little bit more stats. Plus, you have 25% chance to evade attacks, which makes me a little bit harder to kill. Plus... The active is if you use it on somebody, then uh, for four and a half seconds, they cannot attack. They, they can't use their right-click abilities, which is really good for that anti-mage because the mana burn is the most dangerous thing about him. So I'm just farming. Meanwhile, there's a fight going on here. I don't know why I wasn't in it. I'm just, I guess, saving up trying to get my Heaven's Halberd as quickly as possible. At this point in the game, your, uh, your strategy can fall apart a little bit. Just because, you know, we don't care. We already won. I just want to get my Heaven's Halberd up to get it on the end screen, basically. 
But uh, that's a pretty good build on Skeleton King, I would say, is the armlet into Skull Basher into Heaven's Halberd. There are plenty of other things you could buy on this guy. You could buy a Desolator, you could buy a uh, an NKB uh, Monkey King bar if they have somebody who has a butterfly so that you can hit them every time regardless. I know a lot of this doesn't make sense. It's the, the sort of thing where it's like way too much to explain, but you can look up what these items do and understand what I'm talking about. Uh, you could build... basically, the the main idea with Skeleton King is build damage. Uh, every time, build damage, because the damage helps him steal more life, the damage helps him, uh, you know, crit higher, in the, his damage is multiplied sometimes by 275, so any damage items you buy are multiplied, and of course get him more strength as well, it, he benefits from being tanky. And he gets more damage from strength anyway. A Heart of Tarask can be really good on him. Sorry about the cut. Audacity uh, cut out my audio early, so I just cut it at the end of the last thought. Uh, but anyway, yeah, build a Heart of Tarask can be really good. That's probably the next item I would have gone for on Skeleton King. He can also be a really good Divine Rapier carrier. Just anything that gives him more strength, more damage is a really good choice on Skeleton King. Um, but besides that... You know, the way to play Skeleton King is just make sure you're getting money all game, like any other carry. You don't want to spend a lot of time idle, you always want to be getting experience and gold somehow, whether you're in a fight killing people, or just hanging out in the jungle. So, um, you know, that's how you play Skeleton King. Hopefully this guide taught you guys something about how Skeleton King can be used, and how to play carries in general. This is the first carry guide I've done, you know, in the past I've been doing supports, for a good reason. I think you should really start with supports, even though Skeleton King is really easy to play. He's also very important to the team. So, you know, if, if you play a support and you play poorly, that's not a huge deal. You know, you might feed the enemy some gold, but you're, you being behind, not building your 20-minute mechanism or whatever, is not going to, you know, ruin the the your team the same way, you know, being at half an hour with power treads and a magic wand on Skeleton King might do. So, uh, yeah, hopefully you guys are able to play Skeleton King better now than you were before, and I will see you guys next time on Let's Learn Dota 2.